you have the mover for the slide? No. Okay, so there is a, there is. Um, so, to start again, um, thank you very much to the organisers for inviting me to be here to talk about this very important topic. Um, a couple of weeks ago in Nottingham, uh, when I was at a conference with Gustavo, we were almost at the end of a process where Valentina and I have been to Brussels, it seems like, every week for thousands of years, but in fact it's 18 months, and uh, th the process has been very exhausting, and I was thinking, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, I can, uh, I can have a rest, forget about it all, enjoy one of the cultural differences between our countries, and watch uh, the exciting sport of cricket, which I'm sure you know all about, um, and I can have a complete relaxation and forget entirely about the directives. So when Gustavo asked me to come here, of course I said yes, this is exactly what I want to do. So here I am. Um, in my presentation, um, I'm going to give a flavor of the negotiation and how the UK approached the negotiation. Um, Gustavo says that he has a, a question that he's gonna call the Bennett question. I'm not quite sure what it is, but um, in a way, w one of my aims as a civil servant, <coughs> the question for me is, uh, will my minister be happy about the outcome? And um, <coughs> as uh, many of you know from yesterday, the British civil service has uh, interesting transparent ways of keeping their ministers happy. And um, so I'm gonna describe what we were hoping to do and what I think um, is the answer to, to my question about the minister. Um, okay. So we approached the negotiation against a general background of economic difficulty um, and at a time where we were making further domestic reform in our approach to public procurement. So we were very much aware that uh, the general outcome of the process was to reduce costs in the procurement process, uh, increase competition, and we were very much uh, focused on achieving these ends so they would help to uh, enhance growth uh, and also reduce the deficit. We've had a big program of producing savings through uh, in our procurement spend, which has been successful. And we wanted the results of this negotiation to help and enhance that process. Um, you'll see um, from the, the bottom here that we had a list of 10 main changes that we wanted to achieve. And I will look at those in more detail. Um, and a lot of these were set out in our response to the Commission's original green paper um, on the shape of the directives. Um, the next few slides show what the Commission set out as the main aspects of the public sector proposal. I'm concentrating in this talk on the public sector proposal. I won't talk much about utilities or concessions. Um, so simplification was one of the main aims. Um, we had also wanted, as one of our wishes, for the thresholds to be increased um, because one of the aspects of the evaluation of the 2004 directives that the Commission uh, produced was to show that the 
um, costs of running a EU public procurement procedure at the lower threshold levels, the starting point of 130,000 euros, was about one third of, of the, the, the contract value. Now, um, you'd have to make a lot of savings to recoup those costs. Um, I will come back to the issue of, of, of thresholds um, in a while. Um, one of the main aspects of um, the strategic use of public procurement was to move away from the uh, very minimalist approach uh, to Part B services uh, and to make those subject to the full rules apart from uh, social um, services, uh, which were given a specific light touch regime. Uh, at the start, we didn't see this as simplification, um, but I will come back to that. Better access for SMEs is an issue that's grown in prominence uh, in the UK. I know it's always been a, a, a big issue for you. Um, and the, the, the question really for us was, what is the best way to achieve this? Um, <coughs> sound procedures are important, um, but at the same time as supporting uh, a, a, a fair approach to these issues, we didn't want administrative burdens to be added to purchases in this area. So that was our starting point on, on that aspect of negotiation. And in terms of governance, um, we were immediately suspicious about the idea of, of setting up national oversight bodies. I know you have a perfectly well-functioning one in Italy, but we had concerns about subsidiarity, which I'll come back to. Um, the wider background to negotiation was to make sure that the, um, and the Commission did, and were very keen to make sure that through the process the proposals continued to align with the World Trade Organization Government Procurement Agreement commitments. Um, so the, the first point here on, on progress, on looking at the 10 aspects that we wanted to pursue, was the issue of thresholds. Now, the start of the negotiation coincided with the conclusion of a new WTO Government Procurement Agreement so it would have been very difficult in those circumstances to change our commitments, the EU's commitments, under that agreement as part of a negotiation on the new directives. So we accepted that that was the case, and, um, but pushed for to have a review clause so that we could look at the real economic impact because work hadn't been done on the level of thresholds at which cross-border activity occurred. So we're hoping that activity is going to take place soon, and that will feed into the next round of WTO GPA negotiations. The um, second aspect that uh, Valentina mentioned was about innovative ways of providing public services. So to move away from everything has to be produced as part of the public sector, or provided as part of the public sector, or alternatively everything has to be outsourced to find a different way of doing this, and provide for, provide for that possibility in the rules. I'll come back to that shortly. Um, we've always wanted greater freedom to negotiate. Um, <coughs> in 2004, there was a halfway house to achieving this in competitive dialogue, um, but now you know, we, we were clear that we wanted to go further and the initial proposal didn't go as far as we'd expected, um, and during the course of negotiation, uh, as Valentina mentioned, I think we come up with a good uh, compromise approach to which uh, goods and services are suitable for the use of competitive negotiating procedure. Um, frameworks, framework agreements are widely used in the UK, so we wanted to make sure that uh, anything that happened to the existing article on that didn't make things worse as far as that was concerned. Um, 
and dynamic purchasing systems weren't much used. They're kind of electronic version of framework agreements. So we wanted to make sure that they were revised and improved so that uh, they were in fact used and they were in fact dynamic. Um, faster procurement is one in which there's kind of a fair amount of debate about. Um, it, it, this is not looking at faster procurement for the sake of it. It is to reduce costs, but not faster procurement for complex procurement where you do need to provide a suitable amount of time, and here we're talking about minimum time scales, so you can take longer if you want to. And our view here was against a context of, we had used competitive dialogue a lot for public-private partnerships after 2004, but the process was taking too long, so we instituted a, a process of lean procurement to speed that up. Um, I won't go into detail too much about these, these next points, but one of the key things is to provide for less take in the selection process um, to reduce the administrative burden for SMEs, which is the main thing that they complain about. So, to go on to the actual negotiations in council, um, one of the main complaints in the UK um, is that uh, we accept that everything that is agreed at the EU level without uh, you know, kind of arguing about it uh, and so on and so forth. Now, <laughs> um, perhaps, um, <coughs> perhaps I need Valentina to come over and say <laughs> that's not quite the case, but still. Um, <laughs> One of the ways that uh, under the Lisbon uh, Treaty that you can um, actually indicate that you don't think the Commission's pro um, proposals are of much use uh, is actually to get uh, national parliaments to complain. Um, and our, our House of Commons shared our view that the idea of a national oversight body caused problems for subsidiarity. Um, so they put forward a reasoned opinion, as did some other parliaments, um, and the Commission took notice of the fact that most member states really didn't like the imposition of a body that had to perform certain functions, including interfering with the legal process. So um, that was a, a, an idea that got dropped pretty quickly. Um, as we said already, competitive procedure with negotiation there, there was a lot of discussion about which, uh, which uh, procurements that should be used for, uh, and that's, that had been solved uh, fairly, fairly well. Um, and allow, so uh, the negotiation is allowed mostly for um, non-standard goods and services. Um, the regime for spe special and other specific services, the light touch regime, um, as w w I will refer to it as a light touch regime, um, was it was accepted that there should be a light touch regime for such services at an early stage. But the, the negotiation in council was to try and add as many previously Part B services to that regime as possible. Uh, and uh, in fact, member states were fairly successful in adding to the number of services covered by that regime. Um, Public-public cooperation was uh, interesting for us because we got a lot of lobbying to try and make this as liberal as possible so that local authorities could cooperate with each other on the provision of services so to make best use of uh, their activities and public money. Um, so, uh, and we also were interested in this because this provided the basis for our new mutuals, our bodies that were uh, became spun out, taken out of the, the public service and became private bodies eventually. Uh, at the start of their process, they needed to make use of the in-house public, public cooperation possibilities. Um, modification of contracts started to be mainly about 
the percentage uh, under which you could happily modify the contract, say 10% of the contract value, without being worried about the other aspects of this article. As soon as you introduce a percentage figure, you get more negotiation. So uh, I'm not quite sure what that means for negotiation generally, but uh, it's an interesting aspect. On um, transposition, w we moved from 18 months to two years. Um, and I, I'm happy for um, those member states who will get as long as two years. So I'll explain why perhaps that I'm not so happy ab uh, about uh, our position in, in when I come to the end of the presentation. Um, so the, the trialogue aspect, which has happened from the beginning of this year, is very difficult for member states because uh, member states are represented in the discussions by the presidency, in this case the Irish presidency of the EU, who were in fact exceptionally good. And we we're very lucky to, that they put so much effort into it, or else we wouldn't have got this far now. Um, but it means that we are at one stage removed, so uh, things that it's quite difficult to influence negotiations at this stage. Um, on reserve contracts in particular, which was what my minister's key aim to achieve, um, we were faced with a situation where both of the main groups in the European Parliament were against this to start off with. So I went with my minister to explain the advantages of having a different approach to the provision of public services. And they began to be interested in it at that stage. And um, eventually, we, uh, as Valentina uh, uh, said, we will have something that goes wider than just a narrow provision on what we call mutuals to cover the reservation of contracts for certain services for social enterprises more generally. Um, it will be very interesting to see how this is taken up. The European Parliament were symbolically very attached to the idea of the European um, procurement passport, um, but I in the Council negotiations we had already uh, agreed that the provisions on self-declaration and so on and so forth actually met this need. And just adding another layer of administrative activity was not helpful. Uh, and in fact, the Parliament produced, um, commissioned a report on their amendments in relation to SMEs, and that was helpful in pointing out to them that there was no actual added value in the name, the actual idea of the European Procurement Passport. Um, Valentina's already covered compliance with environmental labor and social law, um, so I'm not going to go into more detail on that or subcontracting. On, on award criteria, um, all possibilities are still available within the overall um, umbrella of most economically advantageous tender. Um, and a solution has been found on modification of contracts. What I would say about these issues, anything that's had detailed uh, discussion with the European Parliament at this stage and has needed compromise will has led to very complicated texts which it will be really difficult to transpose. So um, just a word of warning on that. Um, on concessions, what we were keen to do was to make sure there weren't too many differences in the text. And one of the big negative aims that we wanted to achieve in this negotiation was not to do anything that upset or contradicted the provisions in the other, in, in the existing directives or the Defence and Security Directive. I know there are various people here who would be interested in them. Um, we were incredibly sensitive that the position in the Defence and Security Directive and treaty provisions should be untouched and we think we've achieved that. So, <coughs> we, we got a, a provisional agreement. Um, the text will come back from the European Parliament to the Council uh, in the form of Coripa next week. 
and we hope that then we'll be able to ad adopt uh, a final text in the autumn. And uh, as Valentina said, um, member states will have two years for transposition. But this now comes back to whether my minister is happy or not. Um, he actually wants us to transpose in seven months. So you were saying you were anxious about your, the current state of your law. I'm very anxious about how we might manage to do it in seven months. Thank you very much.